Hello everyone, welcome to Viva Dev Guide. So in this video, we will be looking at some JavaScript interview questions which are asked mostly asked into the interview. So this would be the part one. So we will be covering 20 plus questions, 20 questions in this video. And we will be revising another part two for the next couple of questions. So, so let's get started. The first question is, uh, what are the ways to we can create an object in the JavaScript? So this is the mostly asked uh, uh, how you look uh, the object into the JavaScript. So we have a couple of methods. So we can use. So we can directly assign one object to another object. This is the one way we can use a constructor object, constructor pattern to create it. So we can have object or assign as well. So these are some common methods we use. So you have to just check how can we create a multiple object into the JavaScript and just create some examples so you can showcase in the interview. So the, uh, the next question is hoisting. What is hoisting? So this is the most common and most asked question. So you have to be sure that what you are saying into this question. So we have to, you have to break this wasting into the two phases. So first you have to take what is exactly happens, what is the in the and JavaScript, this is wasting related to undefined then have, and then you, you can tell about the late and cons, what is different between both. So you have to be sure that uh, how that function, fun, function wasting happens, then variable wasting happens, then you should know about so is arrow function also going to hoist or not so if we have some arrow function normal function you are trying to access those functions so what will happen what exactly happened over there so similar kind of the things for the uh, var let and const as well so if you try to access some var variable before its declaration or initialization so what value you will be getting so in the same way for the let and const as well so you have to be sure that uh, what things uh, you are putting over here so this is the most common question to be asked in the interview and you have to be very sure so this question you should uh, you should know every time so this is the main question into the javascript then similar kind of the question what is closure so it is related to the function in certain another function so most of the time people say just function in certain function so what exactly the closure function into the javascript so what is the normal function does and what is the closure function done so in this uh, example you have to be clear one example so how can you demonstrate that closure into the interview and uh, another thing so uh, i will tell you one thing into the about closure so what will happen? So if the function get executed, so it will remove from the call stacks. Okay, so that's it. That's the normal function behavior. And uh, talking about the closure, so it has a inner function reference to your one variable or one function. So what would happen? It it removes from the call stack, but still it has some memory location allocated to it. So you can execute that inner function anywhere in the code. So this is one difference you should know about it. So you can try some uh, examples with it. So you will get to know about it. So what exactly closure? So you have to be clear that uh, what is the way we can use uh, uh, lexical scoping happens over here. So you can access some parent variable, then the global variable, then insert variable. So how this going going to be happen? Then uh, another thing you have to be clear one example over there. So another thing about the reference, uh, which I've mentioned that so function going to be uh, remote from the uh, once it get executed. So these three points you have to be sure that then uh, next question is event flow. So what exactly, basic, what exactly happens in the JavaScript? So we have two types of the event flow in the JavaScript. So basically bubbling and capturing. So you should know about both the things. So what exactly happens when the bubbling happens? So and what happens uh, when the capturing as well? So if you want to stop that, so what uh, this would be the counter question. If you want to stop bubbling, then what you what you have to do? And another we have two three things over there inside that stop immediate propagation as well. Suppose you have two buttons and you are writing in one place, you are writing stop propagation, but in the another button, you are not writing that. So in that case, what will happen? So this is kind of the counter questions, mostly interview ask you. So just you have to prepare according to that. So next question is null and undefined. So this is also one kind of the common question going to be asked. It is related to again, who is saying undefined. And null is kind of the variable. So we can say that a null is kind of the variable and undefined is nothing but a, a variable. But variable is there, but we have not assigned any value to it. So JavaScript assigned it undefined with the help of hoisting into the JavaScript. So you should know about this as well. So, okay, so we'll move to the next slide. Okay, so basically uh, now we are looking to the JavaScript from the beginning. So what exactly the JavaScript is a synchronous language or asynchronous language? So this is the 
another counter question will be there. So if you say that it is synchronous, synchronous, synchronous language, so how can we make it as a asynchronous? Then what are the ways we have to do that? And if you have some function and you want to make it as a synchronous, then what are the things you need to be sure that? So this is the slide related to the synchronous and asynchronous mostly. So to create a function as a asynchronous, we use callback, correct? And the problem with callbacks is the callback head. So if you have some callback and inside that another callback, you're writing another. So that is kind of the pyramid kind of the thing will be created for the callback. So it is kind of the callback head. So if you have written some code, but again, you are coming after two weeks or three weeks, same code. If you see, then you will get frustrated what exactly you have written here. So this is the problem with callback. So to resolve that, we use promise. The next question is promise. So you have to tell that what exactly the promise resolved for the callback hills. So, and what are the properties of it? What it takes as an input? What is used is a result. So you have to be sure that. So we have three phases into the promise. So it resolved, reject, and pending. So if it is get a result, then in the then block, we'll get the result. If it is get rejected, then you have to catch that. And if it is in pending, then it will be in the again going to the catch block. So you have to be sure that uh, what are the things you are putting into the uh, while answering this promise. So you have to be clear one example as well. So this is my resolve. Uh, if you are, you have to be clear with one example. So that will say that so this is the API we are getting some data. And after the resolving that API data, will be putting that da variable data under the uh, view or HTML something like right? So. Okay, so next question is related to async await. So it is kind of the difference between promise and async await. This is the mostly asked. So what exactly happens if you are putting async and await? Okay, so and another question is that can we use await without async? This is also one of the point of the question. So whenever you are writing await, why we have to use async over there? So this is kind of the another way to ask a question. So these are some counter questions will be coming over there. So just prepare according to that. So it will help you into the interview. So we have type of promises as well. So we have promise all, then raise, then settle, then uh, I think once is there also. So uh, what are the exact difference between all these? So you can prepare for that as well. Sometimes interview ask what is promise and what are the types of the promise. So they will try to ask you, give you some scenarios over there. You have to be create one. Uh, scenario suppose you have 10 promise and you want to get all the data at the single time then what type of promise you will use then suppose you have to be come out of the promise loop once any one of that get settled or any one of the get rejected so what exactly you will ask uh, what you will use so this is kind of the question related to synchronous and asynchronous so you have to prepare all this question in the thoroughly and in the practical way as well so they will uh, it is kind of the things uh, coming as a counter question mostly. So you have to be checked that as well. So we'll move to the next slide. Okay, so yeah, so this is another kind of the things uh, mostly asked in the interview. What is the ES6 and what is the use of it and what are the new features? So that you have to be sure according uh, about it as well. So the next question is it is kind of spread out and they stop it. This is the part of the ES6. Okay, so the mostly people get confused between spread and rest. So basically, I would tell you in simple example. So spread means we are spreading something, and rest means we are clubbing into the single simple object. So you have one. Uh, suppose I will give an example, so you can according to uh, create according to your example. Suppose you have an array, okay, and you are creating some new array, and you want to get all the, the all the data of that array into the new array. So what you can do only put three dot and write your object uh, write your object sorry write your array over there so it will spread you the value to the new one so this is way we can use a spread operator and the rest operator is nothing but suppose you don't know how many parameter will be coming to your functions okay so at that time you can write dot 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 rest so it will club all the variable into single variable and it will give you all the data into the loop uh, in the uh, array something like that. So you can get all these things into the, your function. So basically rest operator used inside an arrow function. So the difference between arrow function and normal function that we have not written in this slide, but you have to prepare that as well. So can we access argument object into arrow function? This is the question for you. You can check it. 
So the next question is related to event loop. So what is the role of event loop? When it get triggered, what will happen into the event loop? So suppose you have one promise, then we, you have one callback, then we have one set timeout, then you have one fetch API call. So all these things, if it is there in the code, so which one will have the higher priority, which one will get resolved first, then you should know about callback queues, then call stack, then micro task queue. So these are the some part of the event loop. So you can prepare those as well. So according to the experience, event loop, you should know. So th that is kind of the heart of the JavaScript. So interval definitely ask you this question. So what exactly happens into the event loop? Okay, so yeah. So next question is what is prototype chaining into JavaScript? So this is kind of the question also again asked. So mostly when you create some object or uh, array into the JavaScript, it has some by default method attached to it. So this is happens with the prototype only. So basically because of the prototype only, we, we are able to access that. If you try to create some uh, array and you are right to underscore underscore proto proto proto, you will get at the end object. So everything into JavaScript, it is comes with the functions and JavaScript, functions and objects. So uh, you have to prepare this as well. So what exactly happens underscore underscore proto also, I have not uh, written into this slide, but the another question for you, counter question, what is underscore underscore proto? You can check it. Okay. So the next question is what is different between call apply and bind? So basically this question also asks related to the function reference what object you are putting to your function reference. It kind of the question mostly asked when the interview will share some screen, his screen or he will give some link or that he can write some code and you will ask you, how can we pass this object to that function? Then at that time they will ask you what you will prefer to use, call, apply or bind. So this you have to check that, uh, what is difference between call and apply exactly what happened with the bind so you can prepare that as well so next slide is the last slide for us so yeah so this is the simple question so what is the double equal to triple equal to mostly of you already know about it so we'll not put into it more uh, what is the temporal dead zone so basically this is kind of the new question i can say that it get added to the javascript interviews so mostly what happens, so whenever you are creating one variable with the late, so you have created variable at line number one, but you have not initialized that variable with the value and you are initializing that value at line number 10. So basically what happens, so line number one to line number 10 is the temporal dead zone for that late variable. So you can create one example and you can tell how basically this is going to happen. You can inspect and you can go to your source and the script block over there, you will see that you will get one block block and then you will get one global uh, global object so in the block the object you will see your late and const variable so you can create an example of it and you can do your research and according to that you can give the answer so this is kind of the question uh, comes with a temporal dead zone okay so the next question is immediately in what function what exactly use of it when we use it and suppose you one i one question i have so I usually ask, suppose I have one variable in certain immediately invoke function. Okay. So basically we are not able to access that variable outside of the immediately invoke function. Okay. So now the question is that suppose I have one variable a equal to 10 and I want to update that value a equal to 15. Even after immediately invoke function, even after running of that function. So how can I do that? So I mostly you ask this question. So because of that only the uh interviewer will see that so you are thinking in the correct way or not so i will give the hint for it so we use a closure for it so the this is the one kind of the uh, use of the closure so you can create an example and if you have that you can paste in the comment so you can explain over there as well so we can see that so it will help to other as well okay so the next question what is the modules so basically in the ES6 features, we can create a modules, we can divide our application into the multiple files rather than writing into the single code. So this is the way we use a module. So how can we import a module? How can export the value from the module uh, in the file? So this one, you can create one example. Suppose we mostly use a moment.js into our project. So we write import star from moment. So what exactly star happens? So whatever everything we have, Written as export into the moment, it will get everything for us. 
so and if you want to just uh, export two values so at that time star will not help you because uh, redundantly we are getting everything from that model so we need only two values so we can use only those with the destructuring kind of thing so this is the thing uh, we you have to be sure about the exam with example uh, and the last question i think i have added again this question so call up my bank so sorry for this so these are some common questions mostly asked i will be creating another example uh, another set of interview questions with uh, again 20 question i will create i will try to put some hard question as well in the next set and uh, uh, yeah. so that's it for this video uh, and uh, uh, mostly i am getting too many comments on the instagram re regarding the interview questions of the angular so we have already created two videos for the angular series 40 questions we have covered over there so do check that as well so if you have any questions so feel free to dm us onto the instagram page or our ui dev our ui dev guide page we will try to support whatever uh, we can do for you and another thing if you want to uh, have a free mock interview so just share our share your resume uh, on the our email id that is ui dev guide at the red gmail .com, or a dm us on the instagram so we will help you for the mock interviews as well and if you have some confusion regarding some questions or interview process or something then feel free to uh, comment us in the below as well or the, uh, get in touch with the uh, instagram as well so we'll try to solve as many as things uh, for you as well so we are doing that as well since uh, almost two three months so we are putting our efforts to the helping to the people so they can get good uh, salaries and good placement as well okay so thank you for this video so just visit our uh, youtube channel for if you have some doubts regarding angular intel questions so you can have those over there and so thank you for this video so bye bye keep in touch so we'll be releasing another video for the javascript part 2 yeah thank you for that.